2,020 years ago, in a small town, in a dusty corner of the Roman Empire, God became man. That man, Jesus Christ, lived and walked within the small confines of the land which today we call holy, because the all-holy God lived and taught and died there. It is strange that the God who fashioned the entire universe should have remained in so small a part of his creation. As a man, he did not travel even to Rome or any other important city. He remained within the Holy Land. Perhaps this is the first thing which impresses one upon entering into the Holy Land. It is small and insignificant. The Jordan River is small and unimpressive. Hundreds of larger rivers can be found in our country. The Sea of Galilee is smaller than Lake Tahoe. The Mount of Olives, just a hill. All of this reminds a pilgrim that God humbled himself in becoming man. He came as a small child in a humble stable, unknown by the rest of the world. Lord Jesus. It reminds a pilgrim, too, that unless we convert and become like little children, we shall not enter the kingdom of God. For someone who has visited the Holy Land, the scriptures, especially the Gospels, will never be the same. Every passage fills the mind with memories of the places and events described. The words and deeds of Jesus become more vivid, more alive. The call of the first disciples along the shore of the Sea of Galilee is no longer just a story, but almost a memory something which opens our own hearts wider to Jesus' call to us. To stand in the shadow of the great rock at Caesarea Philippi and to hear the rushing waters which flow in that place adds drama to the proclamation, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. To walk through the Holy Land is to live life through the eyes of Jesus. We tread the same paths that he trod, we see the same lakes, the same mountains and deserts. Even the experience of the living things there, the foliage unique to the Holy Land, like the thorn trees from which his crown was woven. The animals of the region, like the camels and the livestock, allows us to live as Jesus lived. Our own senses are filled with the very sights and sounds, smells and tastes which Jesus himself sensed. There is a unique way of becoming conformed to Christ by simply being in the Holy Land. senses have
have an unmatched power to give certainty. What we imagine or remember seems less real to us than what we sense. And so the reality of the incarnation somehow becomes more certain as one walks through these places familiar to Jesus. And as we begin to experience the reality that Jesus was a real man who really walked and spoke in these places, we also become more aware and more certain that he truly died here and truly rose again from the dead. We become more certain too that Jesus the man was also the son and the Word of God.